Back on Inside Tennessee this morning, we are talking about Georgia with regulars Don and Susan and also Professor Dr. Marco Gorman from Maryville College. And Professor, let's stick with you and, and talk about these candidates and their messages. What do each side need to do in order to get their voters out? We know that traditionally special elections are down when you talk about turnout. That's right. Special elections usually are usually you just don't get as much interest. Uh, the fact that this one will be occurring just at an odd timing just after New Year's and 21. Um, those are all both factors that should depress turnout. However, given um, what I think what's about to happen, both sides are going to do all they can to make sure that they are increasing the passion to bring their base out. Whether it's whether it's Republicans saying they need to be concerned about Kamala Harris and Joe Biden's new presidency, whether it's Democrats saying that they have a chance to retake to take the Senate back by winning both elections, they need to get the base out and make make it both sides feel like their voters are voting again in something as special as a regular general election like we had in November. Um, they have to have that passion, like it can't be an off year or a special. They got to make sure this is the once in a lifetime type of um, election that Don spoke about earlier. Susan, if you're in charge of the Republican campaign in Georgia, what's your message? How do you get Republican voters to turn out in this when you hinted at it at the start of our discussion? Yeah, I don't think it's going to be difficult to get the Republicans out because they totally understand what's at stake here. Um, you know, I get, I'm going to say, 30 to 40 texts a day from Mitch McConnell, from Tim Scott, from you name it, wanting uh, me to contribute to either Kelly Leffler or to David Perdue. And it's going on from, it's the most, it's the only focus on the Republican Party nationally. Um, and you've got all the other senators that are coming down there. The Republican senators are coming in to support those two. McConnell's been down there. You're not going to have to worry about the Republicans being focused on this election. I think it'll be a huge turnout. And I think the Democrats are going to have a huge turnout as well. Um, this race matters. You know, we often say it matters. It matters who governs. Well, in this case, it really does matter who governs. Two races will make that decision. It's either going to be the Republican Party being able to stop some of the legislation they don't like that Biden proposes, or it's going to be the Democrats running it through. So it, it is a critical race. And Don, to you, what messaging do you think will resonate with Democrats in the state of Georgia leading up to this January 5th election? Well, I, I think the, there are several. There's so many dynamics going on in this race. One, um, you know, Leffler and Purdue are still tied very tightly to Donald Trump. And, and even as we sit here today with Trump claiming he's won this race, it's beginning to look more and more ridiculous and those hanging on. So I think the Democrats are going to focus on sort of those issues. Also, the Democrats have two incredibly dynamic candidates. John Ossoff, young in his 30s, investigative journalist, previous stint as an aide in Congress, uh, uh, the Reverend Warnock uh, at the maybe the most famous church in America where Martin Luther King used to preach, dynamic. Um, they're going to energize their base. You know, there are little things like sent from, from the presidential election until January 5th, 200,000 new voters will turn 18. And Stacey Abrams, do not discount what she is able to do at bringing new people in. You look at the growth in the metro areas, particularly Atlanta, it's grown with, with transplants. It's grown with energizing people of color and their votes. Those counties outside of Atlanta have become more diverse, more educated, more populated. They're now going blue. You've got to get those people out. And, and I bet, I, I feel really, really good about Democrats' chances in energizing that vote, maybe in a way even that the Republicans, now that they've lost the White House, might not be as inclined to come out and vote. We're going to see. This one's going to be very close. And Don, from a strategy perspective, do you think both candidates will campaign together or not on the Democrat side? And Susan, then we'll hear from you on the Republican side. Yes, they're going to campaign together. This is an all or nothing situation. Uh, I will be shocked if, if this splits. In other words, if the Democrats win one and the Republicans win one, obviously that leaves the Senate in Republican control. Uh, I, they're going to go everywhere together. It's kind of interesting because Purdue and Loeffler didn't seem to pay much attention to each other and really didn't seem to like each other very much 
prior to this, but now they are at the hip and they're campaigning everywhere together. Warnock and Ossoff are good friends. They're going to be everywhere. And I think there's strength in numbers for both sides. But yes, definitely on the Democrat side, uh, John Ossoff and the Reverend Warnock will be campaigning together at virtually every stop. How about from the Republicans, Susan? Um, I think you'll see some of that, but probably not quite as much as you will see on the Democrat side. Um, since Senator Perdue is an incumbent, and that makes it a little bit, I mean, she is as well, but she was an appointed incumbent. And so that makes it a little bit different. And they, I don't think they're particularly close, but, but they are, I mean, we can still, we Republicans can still control the Senate with one of those folks getting elected, unlike the Democrats. So I think you will see a different message. I'm in South Carolina and um, I'm getting totally barraged with, uh, commercials and there's some serious and negative ads that are going on on both sides um, people may get completely turned off and say I don't want to uh, pox on both your houses because it's really gotten negative but um, I, I think you'll see two separate campaigns with Leffler and Purdue before we go to break professor your quick take um, just big picture when have we seen a race like this that has had so much at stake for the U.S. Senate. When's the last time that's happened? I'd be hard pressed to, for me, I'd be hard pressed to find it. I'm trying to re roll back inside history where you have that tiebreaker race. I can't recall one ever. And especially to have two occurring, that's what's kind of the oddity about this, which makes it doubly interesting. You have the special election um, with regard to all, all Loeffler and Warnock. At the same time, you're having the traditional one between um, Purdue and Ossoff. That's what I think makes it doubly special, the fact that literally, however, whoever wins each one, I can't recall. It, it, it's not been in my lifetime that I can recall. I think that's been pretty long. All right. Well, we're going to come back and talk money right after this uh, spending like we've never seen. Susan hinting at that. We're back right after this.